Great to YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent. After the return of my journey, this was the content on my table. So, it's time for another mailbag. But first, I have to say thank you to all my subscribers and viewers who helped the channel. In the last video, two days ago, I asked you to like or to write comments and you did it. I got an overwhelming reaction. Many, many of my viewers sent comments and the content was very, very encouraging. Thank you very much. These comments somehow are the diesel of our YouTubers. This is the fuel which helps us to produce the next video. And I would be glad if we can continue this way that you like or you interact. That is really awesome. But now let's start with this mailbag. So let's start with a big one. It came with DHL, which is very uncommon because it's quite expensive compared to China Express. Plenty of different antennas. These are all antennas for the LoRa range. For example, this one is a very special one. You can stick it to a, way, to a window or something. So you should see a few of them in one of the next videos about LoRa. And a different type of antenna. I'm really interested how they will work. The small ones and the bigger ones. Next one. Uh -huh. Small power supplies. They are, I know that, they are 5 volt. 5 volt, 5 ampere. These are for my 5 volt projects and especially one of these is planned to be used for the fake TV. Because I didn't have a good power supply for this fake TV. Now a small one. What is this? Light intensity sensor. GY30. This is a light sensor and it has I2C interface. This will be part of my collection of sensors and one day I will show you one or two of them. The next one, it comes from the United Kingdom, not from China. And again it's from PICOM and it's uh, their version of the antenna for the concentrator or for the LoRa uh, stuff I bought from them. And then I have an expansion board for their Python devices and you see here you can stick them on this and you have a USB connection, you have an SD card and you have some uh, connectors. Should be easier to work with them. This is the same one for the second board I have. So we take the expansion board and we take the Wi-Pi which I showed you in the last mailbox and then the nanopixel has to be in the direction of the USB connector here and then the connections V in and so on are OK and now everything is ready. Let's connect it to the USB. Aha, uh -huh. you heard the sound. It is connected. Now we can see whether we can do something. Ah, oh, it starts already doing something, at least something is blinking. Let's look at their development environment. So first we have to connect to the device, which already has a Wi-Fi network spanned here. 
and we connect and we have to enter the password now we are connected now we have to open up their development environment to PyMaker go to settings preferences to PyCon device enter here the normal address here the default password and click OK and we are connected via the Wi-Fi very simple I did not have to load anything I just powered up the device and it already is able to do Wi-Fi communication and interact with something cool so let's run a small demo and the LED lights up in green color so obviously something works here and now in white it's not white it's blue because I forgot something so I have also to put in FF here still not here we have some glitches of the IDE 0x 1 2 3 4 5 6 duck, duck. and now it's white so my first micro Python program <laughs> or interaction but it's nice actually it's interactive and the programming style seems to be quite different to what we know where we write a code or a sketch and then compile and then uh, upload here it's uh, somehow much faster now I want to, s to write a small program but uh, because I'm not able to do it on my own I just copy it from the web page of PyCom and I paste it here this is basically a while loop which should switch the RGB LED from green to yellow to red if I press three times enter it starts green yellow red great so I wrote my first ESP32 program you see here this is an ESP32 in this board this is really cool I have to admit next one from China these are LEDs but not normal LEDs let's look at them these LEDs have four different pins and you might remember an episode where I used these kind of LEDs they behave like neopixels but this time they are not 8 millimeters in uh, diameter they are only 5 millimeter in diameter so these fit into many applications where you want to have different colors but only one LED you can use them with a normal neopixel library again a packet also from China also very well packaged <laughs> a little bit a little fun is also necessary sometimes also antenna for the LoRa band next one this is a so-called 50 ohm dummy load and it uh, will be used for my RF experiments and uh, for my RF measurements you see here this is not new it's a high quality brand Narda uh, but it's used so these are quite expensive if you want to get it new so I purchased one used next one and if I 
shake it, I think I know what it is. Must be small parts. Guess what? Assortments. And a second one. Let's look inside. So these are different sizes of the same connector. You will see in the description how it is called. This one for example is used on my CNC machine for the stepper motors. They are a little bit bigger than the normal JST connections so they are for higher currents. And of course also of male and female pins which can be crimped. Oh. Wrong side. Now it's a mess. It's an assorted mess. I have to clean it up later. Um, here again other connectors. I decided to buy these assortments because they are not very expensive and I hate when I need a connector for a particular reason. So I have now pretty all the different connectors here in my lab as assortments. Good stuff. By the way you will find all the links anyway in the description. Now one which is already somehow unpackaged. It is a boost and buck converter also with a very readable manual with big letters unfortunately ah no it is also in English and the letters are also okay for old guys like me so this is a buck and boost converter and it can work from 0 to th uh, 32 volt 0 to 5 ampere. Let's have a look at it. It's not a big board. It comes in two parts. One the display and the interface and one the real thing with cooling and with a connection in between. And you see here connectors. Not the one I purchased but I think I have these already somewhere in my assortments. Now something interesting. Here I have two connectors. I have two cables. But only one connector here. So again read the fucking manual. Otherwise we will not get it running. So I read now the manual and solution is here. You have to open this with a small prying tool here. And then you see that there is a second connector here. Finished. So the manual was okay. So let's try first the boost, boost converter, we set, we have 6 volt input, current, uh, input voltage and we set the output voltage to uh, 32 volt. So 32 volt, 32 volt. So the boost from low to high goes from 6 volt to 32 volt. Now I do the reverse and feed 35 volt. 35 volt is the maximum of my power supply. The device here could even take 40 volt but then we see if we can do a buck conversion. Buck means down. Now I have 36.3 volt input voltage and I go down to 5 volt. So it's 5 volt here. It shows 5 volt and it has very close to 5 volt. If we go to 3.3 volt, 3.3 volt, and here is 3.32, which is also okay. So also the buck part, the down part works fine. So thumbs up for this device. I think this would be a very good 
a bench power supply for somebody who starts with a hobby. You do not need more than one of these. Next one, you see I'm in a good mood because I got a lot of compliments, a lot of comments, a lot of likes. This is really a very nice day today. And of course, also lots of packages. You know what it is. It fits into these small booklets. It's empty, so I can put in my SMD stuff I purchased and I had no solution last time. Now I got many different uh, proposals from my viewers and uh, I decided to try this one first because it fits to the rest of my ass SMD assortments. And uh, you will see maybe it's in the mail or it's in the next mail back. I will also get a new assortment I found in the meantime of SMD components. And the last one for today Electronics parts, six dollars. Very well packaged, not a big thing. Uh -huh. If we look very close, we see what it is. You guess it? It is a radar sensor. Now these radar sensors have a history. I didn't even know that they exist. And then uh, viewers told me that they are much better than my PIR sensors I used in my uh, past projects. So, because I listened to my viewers, I ordered some of them, uh, different ones. This is the first which, which arrives. I'm really interested in uh, testing this because I read also that these can, even if they say they work at 10 gigahertz, which is way above all I have in my lab here, I read that they work also in the 2.4 gigahertz band and not in the 10 gigahertz band. And 2.4 gigahertz is wireless LAN and you don't want to have a PIR sensor in the same area of your sensitive ESP82s or uh, iPhones and stuff like that. So I, I will look at least, I cannot measure whether they work on 10 gigahertz, but at least I can measure whether they work on 2.4 gigahertz because my spectrum analyzer has a range of only 3 gigahertz. So stay tuned. This was all for today. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye!